All right. I didn't know if the... All right, we're good. <laughs> um, hymn number 255 in your hymnal, if you have a soul stirring songs and hymns. Uh, we're going to sing Come and Dine. Come and Dine. Here we go. I hope the video... I think it's okay. Anyways, all right. <clears throat> Come and Dine, 255. <clears throat> Jesus has a table spread where the saints of God are fed. He invites his chosen people come and dine. With his manna he doth feed and supplies our every need. Oh, tis sweet to sup with Jesus all the time. Come and dine, the master calleth, come and dine. You may feast at Jesus' table all the time. He who fed the multitude turned the water into wine. To the hungry calleth now, come and dine. Amen. Amen. I'm not very good at this song, but it's a good song. Um, we have a King James Bible. Our opening reading for the day is Isaiah chapter 55. In the Old Testament, um, uh, kind of right in the smack in the middle of the Bible almost, Isaiah 55, <clears throat> Bible says, <clears throat> Ho, every one that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, that he that hath no money. Come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk. Without money and without price. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread? And your labor for that which satisfies not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good. And let your soul delight itself in fatness. The word of the Lord. Greetings, friends and colleagues. It's Sean Elvis. Before I begin this message, um, I just wanted to give a quick disclaimer slash reminder or whatever. All my sermons here on this channel and this page are free. They're free of charge. All my videos are non-profit, um, I don't ask, I don't make one penny off any of this, uh, content, you know, um, there's no commercials, there's no ads, there's no donations, I don't pass around an offering basket or anything like that. I don't even ask people, um, to share these videos, subscribe, thumbs up, thumbs down. Um, and the reason is because it, it doesn't matter to me, right? I don't do this, um, for, for profit. <laughs> it's a 100% free public service. Um, I have nothing to hide here. I'm nothing ashamed of. You say, well, uh, why don't you, uh, what do you do it for then, Sean? What do you have the, what do you have the profit off this? And then you see, listen, that's between me and the Lord. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm doing the Lord's work. I'm preaching his word, not my words. And so he's watching me. He's, uh, and, and he's going to either bless me, reward me, or he's going to curse me. And and punish me based on if I do it properly or not, right? So that, with that being said, let's get into today's message. If you have a King James Bible, which is what I preach out of, um, go to uh, the Gospel according to St. John, which is in the New Testament, the fourth book, um, chapter number four. four. So, fourth Gospel, fourth chapter. Um, the, pro uh, the prophet Isaiah that we read at the beginning in chapter 55 said, Everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come, buy and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk, without money and without price. Isaiah was uh, talking about this, um, about how God's word is, is free to everybody. You know, you don't need any money to buy it. Um, and it's better than anything that you could buy anyways, right? So... 
I mean, granted, I did have to purchase this copy of the Bible, but the, uh, the point is, uh, the King James Bible is not copyrighted. So anybody can print off their own copy. You can you could write it down, and if uh, if you if you can make a good Bible like this one and sell it to people, hey, you're allowed to do that. Um, but even better than that is anybody can just pick up one of these Bibles, open it up, read it for yourself, learn it, and apply it to your life, um, or teach it to other people, or preach it wherever you go, right? At work. Uh, um, if you're just going to the store, you can preach it. You could oh, people go out there and they just openly preach it on street corners and and in public places. You know, God gives us the freedom to do that because His Word, um, it's His, it's His, it belongs to Him, right? But He allows us to use it and uh, for free, and and that's just the, the amazing thing about the Bible. You know, some people think that the Bible is like this big mysterious book. Um, and in some ways it is, you know, if, if you've never heard of it, if nobody's ever explained it to you before, you know, you could think that, oh man, this is like a mysterious book. I don't know, know anything about it. But once somebody like explains it to you and you get a taste of who Jesus is and, and you believe it for the first time, you know, you don't need a doctor's degree or you don't need a master uh you don't need to be some kind of master of divinity or anything like that to learn and study the Bible and to share simple things and truths with other people. You can just come and dine, right? You could just tell people, hey, come and dine. I'll share it with you. Uh, let's have a feast. Let's feast off the Word of God today, and that's what we're going to do. So, friends, come and dine with me, and uh, we're gonna. Uh, I'm going to serve something up uh, that God showed me, and uh, we're going to talk, talk today about it in John chapter 4. Excuse me, I'm really thirsty. Um, uh, the, uh, John chapter 4, um, we're going to talk about a, uh, the Samaritan woman. Um, it's a simple story. This woman, she's nothing special, right? She's just an ordinary girl. And Jesus speaks with her um, about this living water that we read about in Isaiah. About um, the same uh, uh, living water that Isaiah talked about. You know, this water is free. And, and it's better than any water. It's better than this water, right? This water I drink and I'm still thirsty, right? I need another drink. Um, but he's talking about, you know, this water, God's word, is, is so delightful that you only need one drink and your, your soul is satisfied, right? Obviously, Jesus is talking about salvation, not about H2O, not about real water. Um, so what I'm going to try to do today is uh, I'm going to go over this story and, and we're going to see together um, how after the Samaritan woman learns the truth about who Jesus is, she immediately goes out to share it, right? Regardless of how much money she has or her status in society. Um, and I also am going to try to make the point that, you know, Jesus gave it away for free. And she, in turn... After she received it, she turned around and she gave it away for free as well. So nobody was profiting off this. You know, she doesn't hesitate to spread the word of her newfound knowledge. She was so satisfied that she said, I'm going to go give this to everybody I know. Right. So I'm going to go share the gospel with with all my friends and, and my neighbors and everybody who wants to hear it. Right. So let's begin in John chapter uh, four. Verse number five, where are we at here? Let's see, I think I've marked it. Oh, I marked it wrong. Um, all right, John chapter four, let's go. Apologize. Give you a chance to turn there as well. John chapter four, starting in verse number five. Um, the Bible says, Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, talking about Jesus which is called Sychar, near the parcel of the ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. This is a water well. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus, for, uh, sat thus on the well, and it was the sixth hour. So we read here that Jesus was weary. Why was he weary? Well, one, he was weary because just walking and traveling gets you tired, right? And he's been... He's been uh, traveling a long way um, 
And he's got a long journey to go to still to get to his destination. So he stops at this well to get a drink of water, right? I'm thirsty too, so I need, I need a drink too. I'm thirsting for the word of God. Anyway, um, so, but he was also t weary because he was uh, doing the Lord's work. He was performing miracles. He was fighting off multitudes. He was preaching everywhere that he went. And so, of course, he got tired, right? And so the point that I want to make here is that, you know, when we're doing God's work, it takes work, right? It's not easy. So we're going to get weary, you know, like uh, if, if you decide to serve God, to read your Bible, I mean, that takes work, right? It's going to make you weary. If you think the Christian life's easy, it's not. It's work. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be difficult, but it's rewarding at the same time. See, no, nothing that's uh, worth having uh, is easy, right? So um, it's very rewarding to serve God, but it's also a lot of work. Um, and it's rewarding because not only do you save souls for all eternity, but you also have the right to fellowship with God. You get closer to God and, and you'll have peace in your heart. Let's keep reading. John chapter 4, verse 7. Uh, there cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away into the city to buy meat. Then saith him, or excuse me, then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou being a Jew askest drink, asketh drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Um, we see here that, you know, Jesus, he's asking this Samaritan wo uh, woman for a drink of water. And she's surprised that he asked her because Samaritans were considered like a lower class, um, than the Jews, you know, the Jews didn't normally associate with the Samaritans. So, uh, we see here that she assumed that, you know, she wasn't even good enough to give drink Jesus a drink of water. Right. So, uh, one thing I want to know here is don't assume things, right? If you don't know something's true for, for 100%, uh, fact don't assume that it's true that it gets you in trouble but this also reminds me of when jesus asked john the baptist john the baptist to baptize him remember it's the first thing that we read about in the in the bible one of the first things is and john the baptist what did he say to jesus he said he said lord it's you who should be baptizing me not me baptizing you and jesus is like no no no, no. don't uh we're not gonna worry about that so or how about the time when Jesus uh, washed his disciples' feet and they said, Lord, it's, it's us who should be washing your feet, right? The point I'm trying to make here is this, you know, don't ever think that you're not good enough to read the Bible for yourself, that you're not good enough for Jesus Christ to get saved. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So God loves not just you, but he loves the whole world, right? So, and he's demonstrating this love to this woman. So, you know, it doesn't matter who you are. If you grew up Jew, Gentile, Muslim, Christian, whatever, whatever the case is, you can always turn to Jesus. He'll always accept you. God's not a respecter of persons either. You know, if you're a janitor... If you're poor, if you're rich, uh, it doesn't matter. If you're the CEO of, of McDonald's or you're, uh, you're just the janitor at McDonald's, he, he loves you just the same. So you have every right to come to Jesus, get saved, and all that stuff. So um, another thing I want to point out here is I'm not promoting women pastors, okay? I don't. Uh, the Bible says that women are to keep silent in the church. Um but that's another sermon. Uh, well, the point here is that a true leader, and Jesus was the true leader. He's the king of kings. He showed us that a true leader serves. Okay? Somebody who is a leader is somebody who encourages others, who's the first one to go to work in the morning, who's the first one to work the hardest, right? And you don't have to be the pastor of the church to do that, right? We all have different talents, different abilities, and different skill sets and they're all important so if you want to serve God all you have to do is have the willingness and the heart to do it and you can do it anybody can do it um, one thing I've learned over the years and uh, I want to make this point too is 
a teacher is not above the student. Okay, in fact, the way I see it is you could argue that the teacher needs the student more than the student needs the teacher. Because normally people think, oh, well, the student needs the teacher to learn, right? But uh, the thing is, is the teacher needs the student just as much, if not more, than the student. What do I mean by that is, I mean that, my, my point here, here is that, you know, when Jesus asked this woman for this water, right, he wasn't being selfish. He wasn't judging her. This uh, wasn't a man who was ordering a woman, hey, fetch me a glass of water, woman, right? No, he was, this was a man who was a leader. He understood that, you know, even though I'm tired, I'm weary, um, I need you just as much as you need me, right? Like, I need to teach you something just as much as you need to learn what I have to teach, right? So, what I'm trying to say is never forget where you come from. You know, we've all came from a place where we didn't know this book, right? Everything I'm teaching you today, I didn't I didn't just magically wake up and know this, right? I had to study it. Somebody else had to teach it to me before that, and, and I had to study it again. So, what I'm sharing with you here today, you know, Maybe somebody out there has never heard this at all, right? So it's our responsibility. We need them to learn this, right? Um, remember what James chapter 2 tells us. James chapter 2 says, Faith without works is dead, right? So if Jesus is the truth, which he is the truth, um, it doesn't do him any good to keep that truth to himself and not share it with anybody, right? So he needed this woman. He needed this Samaritan woman. Let's keep reading verse 10. Um, Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knowest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman said, uh, said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? What good is a gift if you have nobody to give it to, right? If I have a gift, but nobody to give it to, what good is that gift to me? Each one of us has a gift to give. If you're saved, if you believe in Jesus, you can give the joy of that gift to somebody else, right? Who needs it. And just because you have a gift to give doesn't make you any better than those who don't have a gift to give, right? So don't... Um, don't make the mistake of thinking that, you know, I'm better than you because I know the Bible or something like that, right? Um, and don't be ashamed of somebody who knows more than you either. Just learn it. Um, and, and when you do learn it, when you do, if you do learn something out of the Bible, you know, don't be ashamed of what you learned. Maybe you didn't learn the whole Bible, but don't be ashamed of your gift. You know, have you ever been to a Christmas party or a birthday party and, and you bought somebody a gift and they're opening all their gifts and they open something first and it's way better, more expensive and, and uh, than the gift that you bought. So you're sitting there thinking, oh man, when they open my gift, uh, uh, I didn't I didn't get them much of anything. And then how surprised you are, right, when they open your gift and they actually like it more. <laughs> and you're like, wow, I didn't know that... They yeah, you know what? I, my gift is better. Yeah, I put more thought into it, right? It's a thought that counts. Um, so uh, don't forget that. You know, when you're preaching the word of Jesus, it's it's it comes from the heart. You know, it doesn't matter how much you know, but it's uh, how much you put into it. You know, is your heart into it? Are you genuine? Do you genuinely care about the person that you're preaching to? That's what makes a difference. Right, and so uh, what Jesus said to this woman here is, God has a gift for you, woman. It's it's this living water, and it's so amazing that once you take a taste, you're you're never gonna thirst again. Once you have a taste of this water, you're never gonna need another drink. Salvation is like that, you know. He he said, you know, man, if you would have known about this water that I have for you, <laughs> you would have come and asked me for it right? Instead of me coming to you. 
You would ask me a long time ago, give me that water, right? You see, that's the beauty of God's word, okay? the Bible, That's what makes the Bible so special. When you, when you share the scriptures with friends and family or, or you post something on Facebook or social media, right? It's, it's always a wonderful gift that you don't ever have to be ashamed of sharing with people. Let's keep reading. Um, we're in John chapter 4, verse 12. Bible says, Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? So this woman, she thinks Jesus is talking about real water, right? But Jesus, he's he's getting real spiritual on her, right? He's about to get more spiritual than she's ever been her whole life. And, and you know, that can happen to us. You know, we can get so caught up with, with our daily activities, and, and work, and 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 everything that goes on, that we uh, it can be weeks, months, years, even that we don't think about the Bible. You know, we we, uh, we don't think about our spirituality, and, and we can only focus on things of the world in the physical world. And let's keep reading, uh, verse thirteen. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drink of of this water shall thirst again. Talking about the water in the well. But whosoever drink of the wa- of of the water that I shall give thee, the word of God, salvation, um, shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. So finally she wants the water. You know, this woman, she still thinks... This water's a physical water, right? But Jesus isn't giving up on her, right? And, and and let this be a lesson to us. We shouldn't give up on other people. You know, if, if we offer them Jesus Christ, we offer them the gospel, they don't get it the first time, be patient. Be patient. Come back again another day. Be nice to them. Be kind to them. You know, Jesus didn't give up on her. She didn't understand right away what he was talking about, but he, he just kept pressing on. He kept pressing on. He was patient with her. Verse 16, Jesus said unto her, Go, call thy husband to come to come thither. Um, that just means come over here. Uh, <laughs> the woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands. Uh, and he whom thou hast, who, who thou now hast, is not thy husband. And that saidest thou truly. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive now that thou art a prophet. So she finally gets it. She finally understands. Oh, you're talking about spiritual things, man. Like, okay, I, I get where this is going, right? And and another thing is she's had five husbands already. And, and the guy that she's living with now um, or sleeping with or whatever is not her husband. So she's, she's kind of a shady woman, right? She's been around the block a few times. And my, my point here is not to bash women. Um... That's not the point of this message. Women who've had multiple husbands, but look, she she, she had a a character flaw. Or, you know, people would kind of look at her like, you know, I don't know about this woman, right? Like she doesn't have a good reputation in the neighborhood, right? Um, but look, nobody's above the gospel. Jesus still went to her, right? He still said, "Hey, you're you still have an opportunity to hear this message." You know, so just because a person may look a certain way or be of a different culture, or or a different gender, or maybe they have a shady past history like this woman, um, doesn't mean that we can't reach them with the gospel. So I'm not saying that uh, it's possible to reach every single person, right? We're never going to be able to do that, but my point is, is don't judge a book by its cover, right? If she, You know, Jesus didn't judge her just because, I mean, he already knew of her past history, and, and he didn't turn her away, right? So when it comes to the Word of God, you don't have to hold it away from anybody. You know, everybody gets the opportunity to come and dine, right? To come and have a drink of this of this free water um, of salvation. So if you know the story of, of Jesus, you know that um, if you know how to get saved, right? If you've heard about Jesus, then go share with other people, right? That's our job, you know, go give it away. Don't be ashamed of it. Don't be ashamed of it because there's power. There's power in just the little bit that you do know, 
See, I don't know the whole Bible, Sean. Well, the little bit that you know is powerful. Hebrews chapter 4 says, For the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intent of the heart. Word of God is powerful, no matter how much you know. Let's read on John uh, chapter 4, or excuse me, John chapter 4, 20, uh, verse 20. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where man ought to worship. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know that we we know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshippers shall worship with the Father in the Spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And the woman said unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. And Jesus said unto her, I speak unto thee. I, or excuse me, I that speak unto thee am he. Who? Verse 26, you know, every single time I read this, I that speak unto thee am he. Always sends chills up my spine, right? Jesus straight up looks her in the eyes and says, I am the Messiah. The guy who's talking to you right now, I am the Messiah. I mean, that's powerful. He, th She's like, wow. Like, I'm sure her hairs on her uh, head were, or on the back of her neck were sticking up. I mean, wow. So she finally learns exactly who Jesus is. She learned something very important this day. Jesus shared with her the most important message, salvation. Let's see what she did with this information. Verse 28. The woman then left her water pot. And went her way into the city, and saith to the men, Come, see a man, which told me all things that ever I did, and is this not the Christ? So, right away, what's the first thing she did? She went and shared what she just learned. She went and shared things about Jesus, right? She actually left her water pot there. She said, this is not important anymore. Having water to drink, it's not even important. What was important is telling people about Jesus, right? So this is the main point of my message today is your work, although it's important, you know, to go have a job and to make money and to feed yourself and your family, they're important, you know, um, keeping yourself healthy, that's important, right? Enjoying your life, you know, doing things that you like to do, that's all important. But never forget the most important thing is to share Jesus Christ with the world, right? That's the most important thing. Remember how excited you were when you first heard about Jesus and you first heard the gospel and then and then you just wanted to go tell everybody, all your friends and family. But then, you know, it seems like after some times goes by, you know, we could think to ourselves, well, I've already spoken to all my friends, spoken to all my family, um, spoken to them multiple times and, you know, we can get distracted, we can get weary, we can get lazy, right? And we could think to ourselves, well, if people want to hear about it from me, they can just come to me. I'm not going to go to them anymore. No, friends, that's, that's not how it works. That's not how it works. You know, Jesus, if he would have waited for this woman to come to him, she would have not done it. She didn't even know what to come to ask for, right? You know, if did Jesus ask his disciples if they... Uh, did he wait for them to come ask him to wash their feet? No, he didn't. He he said, "Hey, come and dine. You know, if 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 you want your feet washed, come on, come on down. Right? Don't wait for people to come to you to hear about what you have, what you know about the Bible. Right? Go to them. Go to them. If you learn something in the Bible, you learn something new. God gave you something today. Hey, go share it with somebody. Right? Go share it." Um, 
God didn't give it to you to just sit on it for yourself or, or to, or, well, how can I make a profit off this, right? How can I make a profit off the Bible? You know, that's, that's not what God told us to do. So friends, if you're in possession of God's holy treasure, even if it's something as simple as uh, one verse of the Bible, right? You memorized it. Go share it with people, right? Go share it with your friends. Um, and not just people who are just your friends, right? Go share it with your neighbors, just like this woman did. She went to the whole city, right? You say, well, I, I don't know anything about the Bible, Sean. Well, well, learn something, right? That's what I'm here for, you know, because Jesus said, if you would have known about this water, right, you would have asked me for it. You would have begged me for it. There's hidden truths in the Bible. If you just sit down, take the time and read it, you'll find them. Verse 30, and we're almost finished. We're almost finished. It's a long message. Verse 30, chapter 4, uh, John 4, 30. Then they went out of the city and came unto him. Uh, excuse me, verse 31. In the mean, well, uh, his disciples prayed, uh, prayed him, saying, Master, eat. But he, said, but he said unto them, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. Therefore said the disciples one to another, Hath any man brought him aught to eat? And Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do with is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work say not ye there are there uh, there are yet four months and then cometh harvest behold i say unto you lift up your eyes and look on the fields for they are white already to harvest and he that re, uh, repeateth receiveth wages or excuse me and he that reapeth receiveth wages and gathereth fruit unto life eternal, and both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And herein is the same true, one soweth and another reapeth. I sent you to reap, that wherein ye besto uh, bestowed no labor, other men labored, and ye are entered into their labors. Kind of a lot to read. Um, basically, I want to break it down like this. When you serve God, God's always watching. Right? He's keeping track of everything you do. Just like I said in the beginning, God's watching me and my preaching here and say, so, you know, what, what what do you have to profit in this, Sean? What's in it for you? You know? Look, just like Jesus said, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me. That's what Jesus said, you know, meaning, you know, doing God's will is is self rewarding. Okay? Right, right? Sharing the gospel is immediately gratifying to your soul and to your spirit. You know, if you don't believe me, go teach somebody who doesn't know how to get saved, doesn't know about Jesus, go teach him about Jesus and watch them become your best friend. Then you try to tell me that, that, that that's not rewarding, right? It's work. It's work. But it's rewarding. And you know, that's the best thing you can do. You know, if you're depressed, if, uh, if you're feeling lonely or, or frustrated, the best thing you can do is, is either read the Bible, but, but, but here's the thing. The best thing you can do is go share the Bible with somebody. Go teach somebody about the Lord Jesus. Just go talk to, to people about Jesus. You won't regret it. Make you feel better. Let's finish. Uh, verse 39. This, uh, this is the last verse. Um, and many of the Samaritans uh, of that city believed on him, for the saying of the woman which testifieth, He told me all that ever I did. So when the Samaritans were come unto him, they besought him that he would tarry with them, and he abode there two days. And many more believed because of his own word, and said unto the woman, Now we believe, because of thy, not because of thy saying, for... We have heard him ourselves, and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. Verse 39 says, Many of the Samaritans believed in him for the saying of the woman. You have a voice. It doesn't matter how small or big of a voice it is, it's a voice. Use it. You say, I'm just a woman, Sean. I have a bad reputation. I've been divorced five times. Nobody's going to listen to me. <laughs> Use your voice. Use your voice. Go tell others about Jesus. 
It's free. It's free to share. It's free to learn. That's my message for the day, friends. Um, let's let's uh, let's close in prayer. Um, and then we're gonna have a reading from. Oh, I think it's uh, Matthew chapter Matthew chapter eleven. Matthew chapter eleven. You guys have a great day. Hope you learned something, and God bless you. Uh, let's close in prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you so much for helping us. Everything that you do for us, Lord. Even though uh, we get weary and tired, and we're hard headed and stubborn, and we. <laughs> We don't always get it right away, Lord. <laughs> we thank you for being patient with us. Thank you for not giving up on us, Father. Lord, we ask that you use our voices to share the truth of your word. We, we ask that you help us learn your word better so that we could share it with others as we talk to them. And Lord, give us the opportunity to meet the people who will listen to us and that they'll that they'll hear your word and receive it with gladness and share it with others after that lord lord we thank you for salvation we thank you for every stripe that you took upon yourself to heal us every stripe that we deserve father help us never forget the trouble that you went through to save us Lord, we ask that you be with uh, everybody today and keep them safe, all the people who hear this message, and and be with all the people around the world who are suffering from this COVID-19 and it's affecting their lives. Lord, I ask that you be with them and provide for them and just be everything that we need, Lord. We, we love you and we thank you for everything that you do, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. As always, we're going to give God the last word. Um, so I'm going to read from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 11, verses 25 through the end of the chapter. God bless you guys. Have a good day. <clears throat> Bible says, uh, Matthew 11, 25. And at that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord in heaven, and of earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and the prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth and excuse me, excuse me, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son. And he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Amen. God bless you guys. <clears throat>